It is 2024, the HR update was three years ago, and Rust has been in a bit of a slump. But there are huge changes coming to the game. I don't want to hype you guys up too much, but I think we are headed towards a golden era of Rust. Some might even say, old Rust is coming back. What is up team, it's been a minute since I last uploaded, but now with the new landscape update that is right around the corner, I felt like it was the perfect time to reflect on the state of the game. Let's talk about the recent updates that have come to Rust, starting with my two favorite updates being the wooden wall update and the large backpack update. I feel like these are the first few updates that have helped out the small groups a lot more than the big groups, especially the backpacks. Do you remember the times when you wiped out a big group of people, maybe like 6 or 7, and you weren't able to loot all the guns or armor because you just simply didn't have the inventory space for all of it. But now, as a solo or duo, you can most likely loot everything without running out of inventory space. Because the backpacks are just crazy good. They give you like, what, 28 slots or something? Which means small groups can punish clans a lot easier, making winning big fights more rewarding. This also means that clans have to put in more effort into recruiting good players and makes the quality of the player a lot more important than the quantity. Also the small barricades or walls, whatever you like to call them, has changed the game a lot. With it only costing 250 wood and 20 scrap to research, it's a super cheap yet efficient item. Something I really like about them is the fact that you can place them in most monuments. Now you might be wondering, how do they help out the solos and duos? Well here's my logic, they are super cheap to craft, which makes them accessible for everyone, not just the clans. You don't need a workbench, so you can craft them anywhere, and logically thinking, the chance of you winning a 1v4 is pretty low, but winning 4 1v1s is a lot easier than that. So the small walls do give you a lot more of breathing space, if that makes sense. You know, you can move around, you can uh, wall met up, take another 1v1, wall met up, take another 1v1. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So we've talked about the wooden walls and the large backpacks. What else is there to the game? Well, the monuments, of course. Starting off with the water monuments like oil rig and cargo ship which both got reworked, making it a lot easier to board them. They added a secret moon pool for the oil rigs that you can use to climb up into the monument, and from there on you can grab the clans easily. And for a cargo ship, they have added an exact outline from where the cargo ship will be going. They also added more doors to cargo ship and a special, I don't know, a harbor event or whatever, where you can also get on the monument from the, you know, from the mainland. You don't have to use a boat anymore. All these small things add up and make it a lot easier for small groups to contest these high tier monuments, especially the moon pool. I feel like, uh, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, no one seems to hold the moon pool, so it's super easy to grab from. And then we have launch site. I mean, I don't even have a script for this part, dude, I love launch site. And especially the update they did to it, they added like, what, three or four green crates to the cobalt side of launch site? And the problem the clans always have with launch site is that it's so such a, like, a large area, meaning it's incredibly hard to hold it down. And that's why it makes it easier for small groups to get loot from there as well. So you can just, you know, there's the recycler side, the cobalt side. If clans are on the recycler side, you just go cobalt. If they're on cobalt, you go recycler. And if both are taken, just go courtyard, man. Or the rocket area, whatever. So, yeah, they made the monuments a lot better, I feel like. Oh my, I almost forgot the best update out of all of these, which is the outpost recycler update. I didn't realize how much I hated clans recycling outpost until they added the 20% buff and 20% nerf to recyclers, inside and outside of Outpost. I remember seeing like, what, 30 people trying to recycle on wipe day in Outpost, but nowadays you barely see anyone. This also makes people get out of base more often, because there's no way anyone will recycle in Outpost, with such huge nerfs imposed on the recycler. I mean, you have to do it in the monument, there's just no other way. Okay, okay, I know what all of you have been waiting for. The elephant in the room, it's the landscape update. But when I was researching for this topic, I saw some really nice pictures from Old Rust. So I feel like I'll give you guys a bit of nostalgia before we get into the topic.
back to yapping. So they are adding back the animal rock, which is pretty nice. It's like a rock in the middle that looks like an animal and two rocks on the side. It's pretty cool. And then everyone's favorite god rock, which did get nerfed, but still, that's reasonable. And it looks really nice. And there's some other rocks. There's like some on the beach, which are nice. And there's this, uh, what's it called? Upside down V, V shaped rock that's similar to the god rock, but not really. And also, actually, actually, there are these pretty cool ones that are like 3 by 3s and 2 by 2 sizes that are going to be interesting as well. But yeah, the most most uh, memorable out of all these is the God Rock for sure. Now, since the HDRP update, the game has felt really flat. And you might not understand this if you're new to the game, but if you used to play Rust back in the day, the game was very rocky. It had a lot of elevation difference, you know? I think it was Jafar who mentioned it became a lot more flat because it needed to integrate the road somehow. And let's be honest, I do agree with him, like, the cars need a rework, I don't really know anyone who uses cars outside of clans, so yeah, I don't know, I don't fuck with the cars. I, I feel like the cars were such, such, an L, such a like, L take, I don't know man, they just need to redo them or something, or just get rid of them as a whole. Yeah, I said it, I don't like the cars, what are you gonna do about it? We got motorbikes now, they're nice, we have horses, they're nice, but god, fuck the cars, okay, get, get those things out of the game, honestly. But yeah, they're also adding Oasis, Oasis, I don't know how to say it, but they look super nice. I really like how they feel, and it's definitely going to be interesting, especially for all the builders out there. Same with the lakes, they are really nice and give the game a lot more life to it. Now, the biggest change to the way that Rust feels is probably the canyons. If you guys have been watching Rust videos for the past two weeks, you're probably aware that they are enormous, but from my experience, the videos don't do the canyon enough justice. If you really want to understand how big they are, you'll have to boot up Rust for yourself and try it out. In terms of building, I don't think anyone should live there. It's going to be impossible to get it in and out of your base. The smartest thing you could do is build a tower right beside the edge of the canyon and just live in that. Okay, I think we covered most of the good updates that have come to Rust in recent times. So it feels only right to discuss the things that aren't as good as they should be. I'll be starting off with monuments. I think this can resonate with a lot of players, but we don't need more monuments. We need the old monuments to be reworked. I mean the new slash old rat town that is getting added to the game is total garbage. I mean it has like 3 crates, a couple diesel spawns, it looks ugly as hell and the FPS in there, oh god the FPS is just so bad. Here's some footage I got inside the monument and this is on like what staging bench, there's no other buildings around me and for some reason I'm getting like what 80 FPS or something when I'm usually getting 120 so it's optimization is really bad. Um. Yeah, and also it looks plain without any emotion to it, so I don't know. I don't I don't really like it. It's not like a different concept. It's not like a huge ball in there, like dome or something. It's just pretty boring. It's just a couple of houses, you know? I understand it's trying to appeal to the legacy players, you know, the old heads, which is nice. You really should support the players who have supported you from the start, from the beginning, right? But still, I don't know, man. It's just, uh, it feels like a huge miss. Then we have military tunnels, which is such a garbage monument nowadays, especially after they added silo to the game. It doesn't compete at all. I mean, it used to have, what's it called, elite crates and stuff, but it doesn't respawn fast enough. The NPCs don't drop MP5s anymore, and there's not enough crates to support the tier 3 value it's given or whatever. So, yeah, and the best thing in that monument is the recycler, which is just crazy. A third monument I feel like needs a rework is military base. I don't know why, but it just feels a bit gimmicky to me. There's the MLRS, but that's about it, you know? Feel free to correct me on this one because I don't play that monument so often, but yeah, I don't know, it just feels a bit hollow as well. As always, don't take anything I've said too serious because I'm just a 20 year old with a good mic. I'll see you guys.